so welcome again. My name is Michał Budzyński. And uh, it's very nice to talk again on this most important front-end event on this side of Iron Curtain again. Uh, let me introduce myself first. So for the last couple of years, I worked or doing contracting jobs in a couple of uh, meaningful, important companies like Firefox, Mozilla, uh, Gadu Gadu, Walmart, whatever. I organized also uh, the first and the biggest HTML5 gaming conference in the world called On Game Start. I know that a lot of you, how many of you have been there on any of the editions? Okay, less than I thought. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, for now, I'm, I'm a contractor in the company called GTech, where I work on uh, lottery games, like gambling stuff and things like that. And I watch TV shows, like a lot of TV shows. Let's say like half of my time is just watching TV shows. How many of you have seen my TV show list? More people than attended on Game Start. Nice. Okay, so for those that never did, I have this repository on GitHub where I track all the shows I watch in here and all the shows. Okay, first all the shows I watch, and uh, I have a script that shows me if the new episode is out, and I need to buy it and watch it legally. <laughs> And uh, so for the last seven years already, uh, I, whoa, there is a new episode of Flash. Okay, I have something to do today. So for the last couple of years, I watched like 5,000 episodes, uh, five and a half even. So it's like 3,000 hours. And also, since that's just the uh, repository on GitHub, you can send me pull requests with your own proposition uh, or vote for one that someone already had. So that's how it works. I have some, like, a lot of contributors. Yeah, 22 contributors, so it's, thanks. And yeah, and uh, I will tell a story of my life today. I mean, of last year, about my adventure with 3D printers. So, we all know that 3D printer is an outstanding thing, right? You can, like, do everything with it. Like, 3D printers are like, uh, like torrents for real life, so you can download real objects and print them in your, at, like, at home, like you do with movies or games, <coughs> using torrent. Uh, yeah, so I bought one once because I had so many ideas on what I can print. And when, I, when, when it already came to my house, I was like, okay, so I don't really know what I want to print. So the first thing I printed was myself <laughs> from the uh, model made by uh, Black Moon Design Gaming uh, Company from Gaming Studio from, from Poznan. It didn't really... I don't look like that, probably. But anyway, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of ideas, so I googled a little bit and figured out that there is something called RepRap. That's the open source 3D printer. You can print on your own printer, right? So that was the second thing I did. It kind of worked. Can I get the water? Gracias. And... Uh, uh, Okay, and after this, I ran out of ideas. So I hide my 3D printer after two days in my basement, and it just laid there. But then, there was a Christmas time, and like usually I don't spend a lot of time at my home, so uh, I, I travel a lot, so I don't have a Christmas tree. For the last couple of years, I didn't have any. And... Uh, so a friend of mine, Kuba, who sits in here in first row, he just like, came to my house once with a huge two-meter-high Christmas tree as a Christmas gift. 
but I didn't have a stand where I can like, put it. It's not so nice when you just like, put it next to the wall or something like that. You need something. So since Kuba is an engineer as well, uh, we spent some time on Saturday morning, uh, evening and Sunday morning, and we printed something that we thought back then will work, but it didn't. <laughs> it, it lasts for like three seconds. Uh, and then, of course, I hide the printer again <laughs> to my basement. Did I mention already that I watch a lot of TV shows? Yeah, so my friends also know that. So when I moved to the new apartment, I run a housewarming party. And they were taught that, OK, you're a computer guy, so you spend like half of your day or even more sitting next to the computer, uh, watching TV shows or playing games or doing like things people pay you for, whatever. Uh, but you never play any board games like you used to when you were a kid. So they gave me Game of Thrones uh, board game. It's a very nice, uh, like almost 150 euro game. Uh, it's uh, number four on "Hey, I'm Not a Jerk" game list. So it's it's a it's a list of games that destroy friendships, and we know from the experience that it kind of work in <laughs> our neighborhood like this. So as I said, it's quite expensive for a board game. It's very nice, like all the prints and things like that but it has very shitty pieces. Like, you, come on, that's not a knight. It's, it's not chess. It's, 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 it doesn't have any, like, I, I don't feel I'm in Westeros fighting Lannisters when I, do to, when I need to manage those things. But fortunately, there is an open source community, of course, like in every aspect of our life, and they created their own pieces. And they're open source, so you could just download it. And if you have a printer, and I already had one, you can print them. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, it was very nice. Uh, and then I had an idea. OK, if I can print elements to the game that already exists, can I create my own board game with my 3D printer, with my own rules, my own pieces, my own board? everything of course but you need to you need to have an idea on how to create 3d uh, models and I do not I'm a programmer I have like enough I don't even want to have anything in common with all the graphic uh, tools uh, my friend said hey uh, there is this open source tool called blender and it's so easy to learn like you just start it and you do your own crazy 3d shit in minutes so after like a week of doing tutorials all the time, all I know is that if you click in here <laughs> and swipe, then the cube will move, and that's all. <laughs> so no, that's not how I wanted it. Like, it will never work for me, no. Um, maybe I'm too dumb. Um, so I remember from this one year when I was young and I thought that I will, s I will get a degree, uh, that we had uh, classes on something called CAD. It's like 3D tool, but for engineers. But it's still, you need to do a lot of clicking and dragging and whatever. Like it's, it's not what the programmer want to do, right? But there are also uh, there are some tools called SCAD, and in here you write code, kind of code. And, it's, uh, and it renders 3D models. Very nice, but SCADs were, uh, were not open source, were not free. You needed to pay for that. So when, of course, here comes the open source community again. And we have open SCAD. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really like the, the language. I'm, I'm a front-end developer. I, first of all, who do who put the curly bracelet in the new line in 2015, right? Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I said, no, I'm, I, I need something else. So of course, 
JavaScript community came with another idea. So they just put J in the name and something called OpenJS CAD. Uh, yeah, it was published by some guy, whatever. The idea of the, uh, so unfortunately it didn't have any, I mean, okay, I, I'm uh, aware that I just said that user experience suck for uh, if you need to do 3D uh, graphics, but it's nice to have any. Like, and in OpenJS CAD, uh, you had all the library, like the library could interpret your code and create 3D, uh, and create 3D models, but it would be nice to have a viewer, like exporter or whatever, like tools or like camera you can drag. So, because it's open source and it's on GitHub, someone forked it and created something called openjscat.org. And that's a very nice tool with exactly like the interface you need and a lot of features like here is the guy uh, the user guide so you can do some basic i will i will show the examples later but you can do some basic uh elements right or some transitions like joining or subtracting elements from each other blah 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 very nice that's exactly what i was looking for but it worked online and you had even if do i have a laser here uh, okay i'm too short but there is a web editor here it's ace or whatever I, I don't even know what so you write your code in there and then uh render it and if it works you just copy copy it and paste into your files and that's not exactly what you want to do right so uh there was a, it was possible to li load external files but then the page reloads and you lose your cam camera angle and things like that. So I did what the people before me did. So like we started with CAD, right? Then SCAD, then Open SCAD, Open JS CAD, and Open JS CAD org. And let me introduce Super Extra Open JS CAD org plus <laughs> plus. <laughs> so. Yeah, so uh, what I did in there, uh, I created an install, uh, like a bash script that uh, cloned the repo of openjscat.org, remove all the bullshit from it, move some files around, add browser sync support. So you work on, on files, on regular files. When you save the file, the browser is, ref uh, is refreshing. Uh, I also add some command line tools because all the programmers love command line tools, right? We don't need uh, user interface for that. Uh, I add some more shapes and more transform functions there. Uh, like the position of the camera was all the time the same in, in the same section. You could include one model into another and use it like Node.js scripts. So you just do require stuff and it install. Uh, it, it puts the uh, model inside your new model and you could do all the transforms and whatever you want there. And that's more or less this. Uh, so about the games. <laughs> uh, we know that games are in JavaScript since the very beginning. Like 16 years ago, we already had the HTML5 games right, on our, in our uh, desktop, uh, like those made by Scott Porter. Uh, web games are uh, on our mobile phones since the very beginning of smartphone era, like Haywire made by Stash, who is not listening to my presentation now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And also, we know that we can run our games on consoles like uh, Biolab Disaster on Xbox or any other game that supports uh, Gamepad API using Cocoon.js on, how, what's the name of this small Kickstarter game? Oh yeah, something like that, right? Uh, also, and now, because of the 3D printing, 
and the ability of creating your own 3D models in JavaScript. JavaScript is also on your table in the games. So let me yeah, let's show how the tool look like. Great. So let's create the new model. That's one of the helpers. I'm not sure if you can see anything, but uh huh. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, anyway. Uh, so, super extra open jscad.org plus plus uses grunt, like most of the JavaScript applications that run in the command line. And you start the new project with, like, you need to put the option model here and the URL to the uh, to the file. This file doesn't exist yet, so if we run it like this, it will open the browser, start the browser thing, and create a new file for us with like default uh, default content I predefined before. It should. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's how it looked like. We have a cube. And now in the we can see the code in here. So let's like if we scale the cube, so we want it bigger, we save the file, get back to the, uh, to the browser, it's already refreshed. So let's, uh, let's do some coding. I hope you're, you're aware that live coding never works. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's call it my cube. And it's my cube, of course. And now, uh, let's add another cube there, but translate it like this. Yeah, there is another cube in here, right? Small one. OK. Uh, if we'll put it inside it's of course it's not visible because it's inside the bigger one but if we instead of like joining them we'll subtract them then you can create shapes like ev every shape you want like let's uh from those simple primitives uh let's try with a sphere with radius 5 yeah so and as I said, like if even when the when the uh, page is refreshing, the camera still stays in the same position. Uh, maybe, yeah. So uh, okay, it's very nice. It supports two D uh, element, three uh, D elements. But what about two dimensional stuff? So you can also create. Plain things like, okay, yeah, I'm cheating now because it's easier. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have an ellipse, whatever, a transformer. Uh, transformed circle. So let's uh, remove, let's create a, a square, place it in one place, and remove it from the uh, circle I just made. So we have a slice like this. And then if we add another one, I don't really understand why I did it with two. Anyway, yeah, so we have something like this. Now, let's add another part. <laughs> okay, so what's going on in here? It, we also have a square. Uh, that's moved somewhere, and another circle removed from it, right? Like, like this. Yeah, so that's what we have in here. 
now. And uh, okay, maybe. Then, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay. So now we have a. Uh, two-dimensional uh, thing, whatever. But we can create a 3D model from it just when we rotate it, like proper amount of time, of times, right? So let's uh, open super extra open jscad.org plus plus supports this as well. Uh, yeah, let's just do it like this. So that's the uh, chess piece, uh, pawn or whatever. What's I don't know what's the proper pronunciation. Anyway, so I uh, I created chess as my first uh, open source board game made in JavaScript. It's on my GitHub. It's called JS Chess, and I have like every second week I get the uh, I get e an email from angry university students that they had. Uh, to write chess game for their uh, graduation or whatever, and they didn't expect it to be something like that because they were looking for the solution on GitHub. Uh, so yeah, um, I have. So I, I I don't know if you're aware that, but GitHub has this very nice, has this very nice, very nice, yeah, 3D uh, model viewer. So. If you upload your models in here, you can do like whatever you want. Even you, you can even see the diffs in pull requests in here. So yeah, I created most of the pieces here, uh, most because it's quite hard to create a knight if you just want to rotate uh, a plane figure. Yeah, that's the bishop. That's the rook. The queen. Whoa. And king. Okay, I'm not really talented, but <laughs> it kind of looks like something else. Anyway, uh, so uh, as I said, as I said, you can. You can require models inside other models. So I have this. Uh, all.jscad file where I uh, require all in include all the models, like translate them to proper positions and display them uh, together. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it will not work. <laughs> nope. It's rendering. Okay, it's a lot of. Yep. So yeah, so uh, you can generate STL file from from here. So that's the 3D model uh, format that it's that can be kind of understandable by most of the uh, 3D printing software. So you just export it from here, put it into your. Uh, your printer, a uh, printer, of course. And I have those pieces in here. Unfortunately, my 3D printer broke yesterday. So <laughs> they're printed by my friend. OK, they're, s they're small because I didn't have enough time, but they're also small so you cannot see from the distance how shitty they are. Um, <laughs> uh, Okay. Okay, and that's more or less all, but because I still have six minutes, I will show you my next project I work on. Uh, so, during the Second World War, 
Okay. And, uh, Germans, uh, I mean Nazis, uh, had this own uh, like crypting device called Enigma. I'm not even sure if that's proper English pronunciation. Anyway, uh, there are a couple of Polish folks that actually broke the unbreakable code there. And uh, I work now on open source uh, Enigma in super extra open jscat.org plus plus. And it's already on my GitHub, but I didn't finish it yet. Uh, but some parts are still there. Uh, of course, I didn't want people to know what the project is about, so I code Enigma on Enigma. <laughs> and that's the code name of the project. Uh, so yeah, that's how the that's how it looked like back in the days. Here are some like other links that are used for. I started doing a rotor. That's how the rotor looks like, uh, more or less. Yeah, that, that that's like the most important part of the of the device. And uh, yeah, so I have a list of of elements in here that that are in those rotors. And the here are the three D models. As the very early stage, so here is the alphabet wheel. You cannot even imagine how hard this trigonometry math is after high school, like to. To place those, uh, I needed to ask two friends how to place those letters like this. <laughs> Shame on me, I know, but yeah. So if you like the project, it would be very nice if any of you have some time to contribute, of course. Uh, especially German guys. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, I forgot this conference had code of conduct. Uh, so. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Have you ever tried to pronounce the name of the project while being drunk? <laughs> no. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. So uh, most uh, well, uh, most of the proprietary computer software, including computer games, uh, uh, have their uh, copyrights reserved so that you cannot legally modify them. Do you think, uh, in the wake of your project, uh, board game companies will start uh, introducing laws that will forbid <laughs> printing new pieces to <laughs> games? Um, I hope not. But if it will happen, it would be, no, it would not be nice. No, I hope, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we all know you cannot download software illegally online, right? And everyone do that, so I don't really care. <laughs> uh, do you think you could use your software to um, randomly generate pieces for games, and have you done that already? Because I know you a little bit. <laughs> and I think you might have. I did not, but it's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>